Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. It's happening, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. It's not going to not happen. I know. You're okay. Come on. This video is about a six-year-old dog who has some complex behavioral problems. There's a moment in this video that everything switches where I realize the motivations for this dog are not what I thought they were. You're going to notice some fear in this dog kind of instantly with the tail wags and with the eyes. Okay. You're also going to notice right here, that's pull. That's some serious pulling. It doesn't really get harder than that from a dog that size. This dog is a heavy puller. That's why they came to me coupled with whining. The other big problem is whining. Two very different problems. So I'm analyzing this. See that little fear move right there, the tail tuck. Like there's fear in there. We gotta, I gotta figure out what's going on. I'm analyzing everything all the time. I'm analyzing the dog. I'm analyzing the people. I'm trying to figure out do the people have physical limitations, mental limitations, financial limitations? Does the dog, some behaviors, if the dog doesn't come to the owners, it might be because of recall. Look at the eyes. That's one of the first things I noticed. Those eyes just seem kind of overwhelmed, kind of fearful. And I just saw those eyes the whole time I was there. And it struck me, those eyes struck me a little bit. I can't tell you exactly why, but they just did. So I want to point out to you. So the dog's first meaning of Prince, how does the dog look? Looks pretty good, right? You're gonna see him with Prince and he's not bad with Prince, but he's weird with Prince. So that tells us some things. I'm just constantly analyzing everything. The dog may not come to the owners due to um, willfulness, but then the dog might attack another dog due to fear. Those are two very different things. So instant into a hump, but Prince doesn't care. This is dog six years old, six year old male. Why doesn't Prince care about the hump? And you're gonna see multiple hump tries and Prince doesn't care. Well, I don't know. Prince knows, but that's, look at this pull. This is some of the worst pulling you're ever gonna see. I, I mean, just doesn't, he's not, tr he can't try harder than that. This dog has separation anxiety. So I was basically going, okay, he wants to get back to his mommy and daddy. He must be scared. Look at this. But why doesn't Prince care? I don't know. He just doesn't, but it's a wind. Oh my gosh. Look at that. And Prince, he doesn't take it personally. So I don't really take it personally. Now here's where that change is going to happen. I, the owners are over there and I'm like kind of feeling bad for him. Like, I'm like, oh, he wants to get to his owners so bad. This is so hard, but he just, he's fearful. He wants to get to them. His eyes are fearful. You know, he doesn't get out of his house much. Everything's scared. Look at me. I'm like exasperated. But then this weird thing happens right here. The owners are over there. Then my trainer comes out and he just says, I'm going to pull to her. What? What? No, no. I just, I've been told and assumed this was all based on fear and wanting to be by the owners. Then you just forgot about it. Now here's some original so, audio. So I realized I basically was like trying to do loose leash walking, right? Then <clears throat> I was back there and I'm like, I'm going to give this guy a hundred corrections. I'm going to never, I couldn't get within 40 feet of you guys without just, I need to get to them. So then I said, I got to get back to you guys at some point. So I said, I got to let him pull. So I let him pull. Then guess what he did? He said, I actually don't care about them. I'm going to go see that lady. Do you realize that? You saw what I saw, right? He was like, mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy. Then she came up. He, she, he didn't know she had treats. I don't even know if he cares about him. He said, he said, forget mommy and daddy. I'm going to go see her. This isn't even real. It's real. He loves you, but it's basically a wanting what he wants, not a, oh my God, my mommy and dad. He literally left you guys and came over here to see her. His true intention was not this hyper, I'm such a poor little baby. I need them. He said, no, no. He's like, I, what I do is pull and what I do is get where I want to go. I felt bad for him for a minute till he pulled towards her. Then I said, I don't, I don't care what you want anymore because you're, it's not real. I mean, does he want to be with you? Yes. He wanted to be with her. Apparently he doesn't know her. No, but she was walking away from you guys. I mean, he, no, it's real. He wants to be with you, but I don't know what that is of wanting to be with you and then completely veering to go see her. 
He just wants to be where he wants to be. Now, it's a lot of fear. You got him at five weeks. Like it's all these things, but I, we can't really care and fix this dog. Right. We can't really give in to his wants and needs and fix this dog. Now, if the dog has some real deep level of fear and attachment, which he does, then we, how do we not give into it? It's like saying like, oh, kid, get over it. Yeah. Kid's like, I don't, I'm scared. Like I get beat up at school and you're like, get in, I guess, that's not good. Right, yeah. But if it's, but there's some level of it that's oh, okay. not that's actually it. real. Right. Because yeah, we just it. saw it not be real. Right. Unless she thought, which he did not think that was you. Right. You were right there. Yeah. And he did not stay the course. Right. He went a completely different way. Because yeah. he felt like it. Yeah. So yes, there's fear there, but we don't really care because we realize it's kind of fake. It just is. He didn't really want to get to them. He just wanted to pull to get to where he wants to go. Those are two totally different things. So we're not going to have kid gloves with this guy anymore. He's a full on adult, not a puppy anymore. And he is basically just kind of obstinate coupled with fear. Right? There's fear in his eyes. We can see that. There's fear in his tail. But he didn't care. He just wanted to pull and he'll pull to whoever he wants to get to. It's not, oh my God, my mommy and daddy are away from me. It just wasn't. I explained it right there. So what am I doing here? I We need exercise and we need mental stimulation. This is going to be so difficult, especially the whining, but even the pulling, even the separation anxiety, it's going to be difficult when this dog is pent up, has pent up energy in his muscles and to some degree his brain is just wild so i put the owner way down there then we go up here now he's got to make a choice he's and hopefully he's just going to run back and forth back and forth back and forth on a new property and he's going to get some of this energy out so that we can actually train this dog you guys you if your dog's pent up you have the most difficult job in the world nothing gets through that pent up brain you can't really train him. So he just keeps going back and forth and back and forth. And that's exactly what we want. Now we're going to bring out some other dogs. And notice that at, when these dogs are out, he doesn't really care for you, the owners. Now, why am I bringing up the owner so many times? Because they are saying he has separation anxiety. They're saying he whines constantly. He needs to be near them constantly. But we're not going to take it seriously because the minute he finds something a little more stimulating, like the, the trainer who brought up, brought me treats, like these other dogs, he basically forgets about the owners and says, well, I'm just, look at the guy. The guy's way down there at the end of the pasture. The dog barely looks over there. He's just like, oh, I found something better. So we are going to be no nonsense with this dude. And by the way, sometimes you need little wins. So I have an hour to get results. I, I don't want these people to pay any more money. I don't want them to come back. I have one hour. You need easy wins. A gentle leader or a head harness is an easy win for loose leash walking. And you're going to see that in a minute. You can't just operantly shape every behavior that needs to be fixed. You're going to spend tons of money on trainers, spend all your time with trainers. If you want to become a dog trainer, become a better dog trainer. I'm offering the Beckman coaching program. Email beckmanventures at gmail.com. I'm going to teach you how to have a helper dog, use your facility, increase your operant conditioning skills, your classical conditioning skills, and help you step by step. You're going to hang here. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. When that whining gets down, push him off. Down. Good job. I like the elbow. Okay. You can also take your hand and you can touch under that jawbone and like, like not like hit him, but like push him off like that. It's just a little uncomfortable. No. No. Okay, good. Good. I like the no. I like where you touched him. We're trying to give as little reinforcement as possible. I'm looking at you and whining is actually reinforcing because you might pet him because you might look at him. Now we're adding a little bit of punishment that was uncomfortable. After that, he actually left you. He has whined less, but let's give it a minute. I don't want to jump in the gentle leader right now. This is good. Okay, we're just going to hang. I want you to do the same thing he did. I want okay. you to say no, and I want you to kind of separate him from you. Now, both times you did that, he did come right back immediately. Okay, so we might have to do it more. Okay, we've, we've, we have less whining now. Okay, proof's in the pudding. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, yeah. Now, he's got a lot to do. Close that door. Well, because I'll leave the room sometimes. Thank you. I didn't mean to say that, it like that. And that sometimes helps too. Like he's whining, he's worked up. For some reason, he doesn't want to work together. So I'll leave the room and my dad's able to calm him down. It's weird. Okay. 
Fights do it. No, weapons. no. Yeah, he fights between us. Next time, go no and do his neck. He came in and won. Ready? Wait. No. Push no. him away. No. And go back. No. No. And go back. Oh, I'm sorry. Go back to your hands just being on your chest. No. Just hang out. Push him no. off. And eye contact is reinforcing. Touching is reinforcing, except for an uncomfortable touch. Right. So looking, touching him, jumping on you is reinforcing. We're just going to try. Now, if he ever comes through here, he's not whining. He's not looking. He's not begging, whatever. Then I want you guys to calmly pet him. The minute he starts whining, I want you to either remove your hand or go back to no. Because he's going to start whining probably the minute you pet him. <laughs> <clears throat> but we don't want to just not tell him what he did right. Okay. You can't just tell him what he did wrong. Okay, that makes sense. Don't tell him he's a great boy because he's not a great boy. He's an okay boy for not whining. Wait, wait, wait. He goes under my legs a lot too. Push him. No. Get him out of there. I didn't mean to say it like that, but like that's super, he needs to just be okay. Like move your knee, move, yeah, move him away. Like take your no. leg and like push his butt. Beautiful. <clears throat> his like only comfortable, when he's comfortable in life is when like you guys are looking at him or touching him or something. He needs to be comfortable on his own. Makes sense. And he, it would be great if he knew that like, if I come up and sit there and I'm a chill boy, that guy will pet me. Right now, he, he just doesn't know that. We had to go through about five minutes of nose and whining till we got that whining down. You can do it for five minutes at home, mm -hmm. yes. right? And I think it's constant uncomfortableness and away from you-ness as the consequence for whining. And then the occasional reinforcement for not whining. Will you open that again? Will you open that door again? There's two ways to get rid of a behavior. Okay. One is don't reinforce the behavior. It a slow line decreases very slow. The other is punish the behavior. And it's a much more, much more drop off quick. Mm -hmm. With the no reinforcement thing, there will be something called an extinction burst. So you don't reinforce it, you don't reinforce it, you don't reinforce it. It gets worse before it gets better. Then it drops off. Okay. That would be babies crying in their crib. We go, we can't go in there anymore. Well, it's, it's get worse. And if you go and reinforce that baby or that dog at that wine because you can't take it anymore, you just screwed up the whole thing, really. But you got to understand it will drop off. <laughs> but I like to throw punishment in there. Not with the baby thing. But with the, <laughs> I like to throw in the punishment so we're not just going nuts for a week on the whining right. by ignoring, ignoring, ignoring. And you have to remember to make this pretty, like, like, not, it's not a hit. It's a, it's this. If you do it half-assed, it's, so there's neutral, there's punishing, reinforcing, and neutral. So this is super punishing, shot collar at a thousand, and a starving dog eating food, reinforcing. Your touch has to be on this side of punishing, okay? If you think he's enjoying the touch, you gotta up, up it right. to more punishing, okay? It's never going to be over here because you're touching him. But if we make it just punishing enough, you know, the behavior will go away. Training and changing an organism's behavior is sometimes ugly. That push away method for the whining is kind of an ugly, not pretty thing, but you always can't be just shaping of behavior using clickers and operant principles. Sometimes you just have to get down to the nitty gritty and say, oh, the dog is whining for attention. How do we make there be no attention or the attention be a little on the punishing side? Hence, the behavior will go away because whining is very visceral behavior. He's not, this dog is not choosing to do it. It's just coming out of him. So you can't really operantly deal with it. You just have to kind of go by feel. So we added a cue, we added a push away, and the proof was in the pudding. The dog did start to whine much less and they need to keep that going when they get home. But whining is really difficult, guys. I want you to, to understand that because it works on a classical conditioning level, not an operant conditioning level. It's an automatic response as opposed to a choice. And when something is a choice, you can reinforce it to increase it or you can punish it to bring it down. When something isn't really a choice, it's gonna take longer to, uh, to, to go away, okay? So sometimes you need wins. 
the gentle leader or the head halter, as I should be calling him because gentle leader has never said thank you for selling a zillion of their products. The head halter like a halty is an easy win. We do not have the time. They do not have the money to operantly shape this dog to walk next to us because he has pulled for so long and he pulls so hard. So we need a little win. And remember what happened down in the pasture? This dog basically showed us his cards, showed us his hand. He said, I'm actually not that scared. So we're going to go, okay, then you're going to deal with this thing because you're an adult and you're not that scared and you're a little obstinate. So there's a little bit of a fight okay, happening. Okay, come on, come on, come on. It's happening, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. It's not going to not happen. I know. You're okay, come on. Go ahead and... Walk, loose leash, looser. Good, good, good job. And relax that leash, good. He's not doing anything terrible, so you don't want to correct him when he's just being an okay boy. Good, walk wherever you want to walk. I mean, we'll take a little in front. We won't take pulling. So what did I do in this session? We reduced the whining significantly with a pretty simple method of separation and being a little more on the punishing side and then not reinforcing the dog. There will be an extinction burst in there where the dog is going to whine more. You cannot give in to the extinction burst. An extinction is when a behavior essentially goes away, but it'll get worse before it gets better is essentially an extinction burst, but you can't give in to it at that time. We had a quick win with the gentle leader. The dog is walking a hundred times better they should just keep using the gentle leader who cares just keep using it don't worry about getting off of it easy wins are important in life and we got the dog a lot of mental and physical stimulation i gave them a treatment plan for exercising this dog because they have to exercise this more plus we learned about the dog a little more where yes he's nervous we saw it in the eyes we saw it in the body but he's not that nervous. He's not that scared. He wanted to see a random lady as much as he wanted to see them. And I thought, and they thought, oh, he just needs to be with all us all the time. Well, he doesn't actually. He can be distracted very easily and find other things that he's into on the drop of a hat. So analyze your dog, right? Look for easy wins, figure out what your dog's motivations are, then use different methods use classical conditioning principles, use operant conditioning principles, use reinforcement, use quote unquote punishment, use separation from you as a punishment. And I think you'll be good with your difficult behaviors in your dog. Hopefully you like that video, subscribe to the channel.